It's a beautiful day for a podcast. Don't you think yeah. so, Mr. Jor Raptor? How you doing? Yeah, I think it's a great uh, day. It's a crazy week. Mm -hmm. um, playing loads of games, making lots of content, pouring myself some tea. Maybe you hear it, maybe not. Oh, for the listeners. oh now I can see it. Yeah. Wow. This is like a 4D experience. Wow. This is yeah. crazy. <laughs> I had to deal with some crazy conspiracy theories. Um Ooh. and I um yeah, we will get into that, I think. Oh, I'm excited. Uh, <laughs> and uh I uh ordered some food so that might get here any moment. So then I will quickly open the door and then come back. So, that's so you know. How how have you been? That's great. Uh I've been good. Yeah. I've been good. Um you know, once again, this this morning, we're going to talk about some like Dragon's Dogma 2 stuff because, of course, we can't have anything nice. So at the start of this morning, um, I woke up to everybody calling for the game to be canceled again, everybody raging um, about it. So we're going to talk about that. Um, and yeah. uh, at the same time, we got some potential like maybe speculative stuff about AC red, but that was interesting. We saw rise of the Hydra, oh, yeah. which looks insane. Um, there's been a lot of stuff. So I think there's going to be some good stuff to chat about. Um, and then as for personal things going on, it's been a pretty uneventful week. So just hang, hanging out, just hanging out. Yeah. So that's where we are. Um, thank you, Mr. Steel. Yo kill for uh, becoming a member as well over on YouTube. Appreciate you. You don't um, want that person in your team. <laughs> no, yeah, uh, I'm busy, the party's full, party's full. Uh, so, uh, I mean, the, the two elephants in the room, of course, are Dragon's Dogma 2 and Rise of the Ronin. I have not touched Rise, well, I did touch Rise of the Ronin, I tried it. Um, I've not okay. played fully Rise of the Ronin. I, I doubt I will finish it, but um i've played all of dragon's dogma 2 you've put in have you finished dragon's dogma 2 or just put in many hours i i put in pretty hours and i'm just taking my time that that's a game i i heard some people that got it early as well like some friends that just blazed through the main story and i don't think that's yeah. how you should you should play this game uh, i think you actually said that last week to me uh after the show like uh, it's better to just take your time so i kind of did that and i've been having a great time like there's one so you have this sort of um, starting area, which is your average forest and sort of human area. And they also have the more yeah, deserty, um, beastern territory. And I found a way to reach that very early on. So I was like level 11 or something or 12. And I got into this more high level zone and then I could not get back. So I had kind of my cool uh, story there um, where, and then at one point, because of course you if you like travel for a long time you lose your maximum health like it goes down and down so you can still use potions or healing but yeah your maximum health is a little less each time ever each, after each battle so at one point i only had like i think one third of my health and then i went to a camp uh, f uh, fire to rest and get my full health back but then enemies attacked I lost my campsite. I was in this high level zone. I, I was really like, I have to redo my save because I can't get out of this super, uh, yeah, against these. I, I, I was like one shot. I still figured it out. I got to the, 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 the beast sort of city and I uh, got to an inn there and could rest. So, um, it, like, stuff like that is just, just really cool. And you, you kind of make your own uh, story in the game. And, yeah. There are totally some issues because of the kind of freedom, but yeah, I, I do think that's kind of worth it for what, what they are trying to do. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. It's, it's really cool. There's a lot of emergent stories and things. The one I shared in the review was when I was riding overnight on an ox cart and I was trying to get, you know, between one big city and another city. And uh, so I was riding it. And normally when you're not jumped by goblins or an ogre or anything, um, you just ride and it's it's basically just a load screen. It's it's an in-game form of fast travel. And 
Uh, but in this case, I got jumped by an ogre and some goblins and stuff. And so we fought him off. But one of my pawns I had recruited with a great sword, he was trying to be helpful and swing at a goblin, but he swung too wide and broke the wagon we were riding on. So I had to run the rest of the way in the middle of the night oh, because he broke the wagon. And it was a cool, like, dynamic thing where it's like, okay, I didn't really think that that could happen, but it sure can. And I had to find and figure out a way around it. And there's a lot of things like that where you kind of have to dig yourself out of those holes that you find yourself in. It's one of those things some people will absolutely hate and find super annoying. Just like with that, some people are going to find you getting, you know, lost or not lost, but uh, kind of stuck in a late game area because you stumbled onto it. Some people would be like, oh, that's terrible. I hate it. In other ways, it's kind of fun. Uh, so it just depends on yeah. how you interpret it. Um, yeah, I've been normally I'm not a huge fan like stuff like the Reddit Redemption. Your horse is dead. Now go walk for an hour <laughs> like it's stuff mm -hmm. like that. I don't like. But uh, yeah, in this game, I don't know. I think the, the it's very rewarding, like killing enemies gives you a lot of XP and um, yeah, to to rank up your vocation. And there's a lot like of chest and every gear item doesn't have a level requirement. So if you find something in the late game area, you can immediately use it. So that makes it all very rewarding. So yeah, they kind of welcome like, you. Uh, They're like, you earned this by yeah. getting here. So take yeah, it, so wear that, it. That, that, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I did. I did not really look at the news. I did see the sort of microtransactions they added. I did see someone say that they put it in the review guide that they were going to do it. But I'm. It, it's always like kind of hit or miss for people. Um, who don't know, like, of course, when you... Yeah, we are, of course, blessed to get games early so we can make content for everyone um, before release. And they always send a review guide with some tips and tricks. But every company does it different. Sometimes they say, don't talk about anything past this point. And then you're like, okay, sure. And sometimes they say, don't tell that this character died in this scene. And I'm like, yeah, what the heck? Like, yeah, well, why? you spoiled it. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's... I'm always kind of hesitant on checking the review guide or, or there they also like share the spoiler guide. So I was like, I'm not going to touch that. And they put in, yeah. Uh, or like in that guide that there were going to be microtransactions. I don't know. It feels, I, I totally want to believe that they did not design this game around it. Be, but, but I, I guess why people, feel that way but because there was of course already a dragon's dogma one where these systems were kind of similar i uh, i don't think they yeah that they because one of the things you can buy are like uh yeah ways to fast travel and fast travel is pretty limited in this game so yeah you're tr like the point is to go from point a to point b on foot and yeah they are selling a fairy stone i think right that you can just uh, fast travel to some of the locations that have these fast travel spots so that kind of ruins the game in a way and it's kind of weird yeah i i think i've seen some of those posts where people are like they stripped out fast travel just to sell it back to you and that is incredibly dishonest those people yeah. that are saying it and i mean it's clear they haven't played the game they don't know the game because th everything that's for sale in the game uh through these microtransactions is in the um, in, in the game. And honestly, most of it you're going to be drowning in anyways. Like there's pretty much nothing in here. I'm pulling it up right now. Um, that I ever, no, I like it for. as well. Like, like even I, I saw one article talk about how you can like change your character and stuff, but that you can do that in the game as well. There's, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's like a barber sort of thing, right? Yeah. Like, and it's, um, with most of this stuff, it's like rift crystals, which are used for, um, like altering and purchasing things to change like um, your pawns vocation or pawns a temperament things like that and so they're like wow you can pay to do this stuff that's great it's like yeah you can do this in the game and you're gonna have so many rift crystals it's not gonna be like i don't know why you would ever need to buy them like same with wake stones port crystals these are all things you'll have in the game um camping kits like if you pay three bucks for a camping kit in Dragon's Dogma 2, you're an idiot. Like, I had maybe six yeah. or seven in my party's inventories at all times. Like, not usually carried with me because they're very heavy. So, usually I leave some back in my stash. But, 
like I never felt the need to get any of these things. And I never felt like, oh, I bet they're going to sell these or, or if they had a microtransaction, I'd be checking that out. Like not once did any of these things feel mandated. And when you go and check other Capcom games, you know, none of this is new. I mean, the list for Devil May Cry 5 is very expansive. There's a ton, um, <laughs> like many, many microtransactions. Uh, for Monster That's Hunter a, World, yeah. there's over 200 microtransactions available on That's Steam. That's like emotes, right? Yeah, it's all sorts of things. Emotes, uh, cosmetics and statues for your your little like home base, things like that. But nothing gameplay, in, because. But but I think like for Monster Hunter, it's like they see it more as pay to win because it's more like a live service game where if you could like get a trap for free or whatever to uh yeah more easily take out the monster even though you can buy these things or craft these things yourself then that's probably why they're doing it i think or dragon's dogma because it's single player but i remember that the dmc actually being um yeah kind of crazy with it as well like the sort of crystals and stuff you could buy yeah the, and the, i mean it's they have like one blue orb for a dollar three blue orbs oh, yeah, for the, two dollars orbs, five yeah. orbs for three it's like there's many, many. So none of this, unfortunately, is new. Um, my frustration with microtransactions in games is specifically when the games have been balanced or built around pushing you into them. Like my frustration with Assassin's Creed Valhalla was that they, in my opinion, it seemed they balanced the game in a way that was extremely bloated. And so if you didn't want a super bloated time, you could look at things like the XP boost or the crafting like resource collection boosts um odyssey also had the xp boost thing they've been doing that for a while yeah but it, did you ever use those i XP tested boosters? them yeah we did it's been a, years but i did it for odyssey yeah, yeah. back when that dropped like six years ago jesus um we're old yeah but when that dropped i remember testing it and the the xp multiplier basically made it so you could bypass the side quest grind if you were to use it from the start of no, the but game. I, I, yeah, I think it, it got even worse though because uh, I think you would outlevel everything. So it, yeah. it, I think they it clearly showed that it was not it was just put on top of it. I don't think it was designed around it because if you would use the XP booster from the start or halfway through, then you would be like way higher level than the recommended level. There was this like sort of gap. I think for at one point you would have to be like seven levels higher for the next main mission if you did not do side quest. But I totally get like the, those side quests were pretty great. So they just didn't find a an interest a good way to push people in that direction because I, I don't think you should push it. Just uh, do things to entice people to play the side quest instead of having it be like a yeah hard requirement. Yeah, I mean I but think I, with Odyssey they they were pushing like that whole XP boost thing was designed. For people that just wanted to play the main story and skip all the side stuff and if in that capacity it worked because you would level so highly that you you were gonna like walk in and one shot every side quest if you if you had that equipped um but with the case of yeah, they even had to uh, make a feature to pause the, the xp boost yeah they had <laughs> so to put that in it yeah <laughs> it was a separate button like because yeah initially i remember they got me like the deluxe whatever premium ultra whatever edition that had it and so by default it was like enabled on my my save and i was like can i can i turn it off because most people are not going to play with it and it was like a very difficult thing for them to like yeah. turn off my xp boost they'd put on so there's a whole thing but um with dragon's dogma 2 where i'm at is like reviewers didn't have access to microtransactions reviewers played the game without them and the consensus is it's around a nine out of 10, um, right around there. And so I'm like, if they rebalance it, if they issue a patch that makes it so port crystals, now you don't get any and camping supplies are impossible to find and rift crystals plummet in, in drop rates and stuff. Then there's reason. Absolutely. I think to, to say that this quantifiably makes the game worse, but these microtransactions, I don't see how they make the game worse because everybody that has reviewed it and played the game played it without them and still thought the game was really good. I understand like as a point of principle, maybe you want to boycott it because there shouldn't be microtransactions in single player games and stuff like that. That's fine. Um, 
but I, I would love to see if people are being consistent with that because then you're boycotting like I think Resident Evil 4 had a bunch of microtransactions. Pretty much anything Capcom has touched is going to have tons. Yeah, of Yeah, I, I think it's it, it's it, it's more the nature of this game. I think it's more about the fact that this some people see this kind of as like there's no difficulty option, for example. So it, it really just like a, a Souls like from FromSoft, like imagine them adding stuff like that to their game. It, it's I think it's kind of like that some people look at this game kind of similar in a similar vein where if you say, hey, I've achieved this in the game, everyone knows, okay, yeah, you could not cheat. There was no option to do that. Yeah, great job, nice achievement. And by implementing these things, they, yeah, they, they kind of ruin that. They, they say basically, yeah, you can bypass it even though we know that, yeah, I mean, what you can do, like you can buy the RC, which is needed to get like very high level pawns. So you could like spend a hundred dollars to get a lot of the RC, and then from moment one get like a level fifty uh, pawn to join your your party, and then yeah, w they will wreck the game. So there are it, it is it does feel kind of like you can make the game easy mode if you pay, and I think that is the biggest thing where people are. Yeah, that people are not happy about because for Resident Evil, it's a single player horror game. Like what 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 are you gonna do, right? It, it, and and DMC is kind of similar. It's I, I don't think um yeah, the challenge in that game is on the I mean that game can still be challenging, but it's still like a very linear uh, type of uh yeah, type of type of game. And this is really this adventure where yeah, you're supposed to lose your camping gear in the middle of the of uh, of the open world and kind of yeah <laughs> good luck and yeah. if you can then get your credit card and get a camping and have like a sort of hunger games airdrop or your like that kind of ruins the whole game and even though it's single player and yeah you can control that yourself i do think the sort of community around it uh makes it kind of like people are, People are not that happy about it, and I don't think the first game had stuff like this, right? And uh, so, think, sure, yeah. Well, let me Google it. Um, I, I mean, on the one hand, I think Dragon's Dogma Two is actually far easier than people maybe remember or expected. Like, I didn't find the game particularly difficult. Um, I, I mean, the closest thing I could point to is like, this would be like in um, Elden Ring. If you were able to purchase like, uh, we mentioned it on the, the stream earlier. Like if you were able to purchase larval tears to respec your character or something. And it's like, yeah, you can get them in the game by completing mini bosses and side bosses and stuff. Um, or finding them in difficult to find locations and stuff. Or you can purchase them for five bucks a pop and then just respec. I, I can see why people would be frustrated there, especially because from uh, for from software that would be coming kind of out of nowhere. Um, I think with my my thing at the end of the day is like, I think I'm just <laughs> I'm exhausted of people like demanding that every other game gets canceled for for things. So already I'm like transparently just being clear with everybody. I'm already like kind of just exhausted from all of this, but. With this stuff specifically, I just think the game is great without the microtransactions. So clearly you don't need to use the microtransactions. I agree, like purchasing these microtransactions, I think would actually ruin the game for you. I think if you were spending a lot of the money on camping 100%. supplies, port crystals to drop everywhere you go, there's a fast travel point that you still have to use fairy stones. So you can't, and I don't think you can purchase fairy stones. So um, it's not like it immediately breaks the game. Oh, you that can't? Way. Okay. But I, you can put the port crystals down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, um, because yeah. just in case somebody has not played it out there, you need... The, the port crystal is like the, the location you fast travel to. You have to use a fairy stone in your inventory that you find to then kind of break it, toss it in the air, and then you all warp to, to the port crystal as the fast travel point. So it's meant to be kind of a, an emergency thing that you use as a last resort. Oh, the wake stone is kind of OP, though. <laughs> you the, can buy yeah, that. you can purchase. They have five variants, so it looks like you can only purchase five of them in total. I still oh, yeah. think like... If you are playing this game and you need to use five warp crystals, like you are woefully underpowered for whatever you're taking on. 
<laughs> like I, I don't think I think the yeah, only but, time I used a warp or a, uh, a wake stone wake stone was but, once in in a big boss fight. I, I don't think I ever used two in a boss fight or anything. Like again, I think it's gonna make the game worse. I think if you're buying these things, it's gonna ruin the game for you. Um, so it's kind of like karma yeah. <laughs> if you choose to engage with microtransactions. I, again, if I were the all like powerful dictator of gaming, I wouldn't allow this. Like, I'd be like, no, it's a single player game. No microtransactions. Let's all go like Baldur's Gate three and do that. Um, but I, I, oh, go ahead. Oh yeah. No, I, I was like asking like, is this worth it for them? Because it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> I can't imagine them selling enough for it to be worth it they it did go up so it was first mostly negative or like yeah and now it's mixed so the reviews are going up uh, obviously a lot of people bought it saw these and were like what the heck it didn't even play it and now they're like wait the game is actually pretty good um but is it worth it for them because now this this could have been like a big launch and now everyone or most people i mean we are of course still in our bubble but this game is for the hardcore so the, if a lot of people are talking about it in that sphere it's still not great but is it worth it for capcom to have these very small and usually we say microtransactions and then we're looking at a 20 dollar outfit or whatever so is it still a microtransaction but looking at this it's like two uh, or one euro two euro like it's very very small purchases that you can make like are yeah. they really getting enough money from this to warrant the lower reviews i mean so honestly, maybe a lot yeah well i was just maybe gonna say people like, skip it now i don't think for one i i think the number of people that actually like boycott the game over this is shockingly small like i don't buy for a second that this is going to have any significant impact on the game um I think it's there's there's two layers of of the the like outrage right now and they kind of cross over. On the one hand there's a lot of people who have PCs that for whatever stupid reason the game just doesn't want to run on it. Even people with powerful PCs, Moist Critical couldn't get the game running properly last night when he was trying to play it. Um and I'm sure he's got a great PC. So there's for whatever reason some PCs that just don't want to run this game. And that sucks and that's unacceptable. And those people should refund the game and leave a negative review because they couldn't play the damn game. Um, I think that's absolutely fair. But I think some of that outrage is also crossing over into these other things. And so like people are becoming hammers in search of a nail. And um, so I think Capcom is probably taken a bit aback by the social media outrage over the microtransactions because they've done this with pretty much every other one of their big releases for the last decade. And there hasn't really been that much outrage at all. And some people are like, well, it's different because it's a different type of game or monster hunters co-op and it's more cosmetic stuff. And you know, there's excuses for this and that, but the point is Capcom has put little microtransactions like this in most of their games and haven't really seen a lot of blowback and they're seeing it now. And I think it's probably because there's a lot of people that are also very upset over the technical performance, and this is also something yeah, yeah, that yeah. they can can latch on to. And it's um, the first seventy dollar game that helps probably a bit as well. That it's like, oh, okay, um, yeah, that people have to spend more this time on PC. Yeah, it's. I mean, people, like I said, are justified in being pissed about performance, and if the game doesn't run, um, that stuff is very valid. I I won't pretend to know why certain high end PCs can't run the game while others can. Who knows? But they should my high end it. PS5 I'm doing just fine. <laughs> Super high end PS5, yeah. <laughs> it's it, yeah, it's it's just unfortunate because nowadays with games it feels like it feels like you can have an awesome game, but there's always going to be one asterisk next to it, or there's always one stupid thing about it that you're expected to call out and try to cancel it over, um, and it's it's just kind of kind of dumb and uh, it just drives me crazy and the, it diminishes the value of actual scandals and problems in games um when you're getting outraged over every single little thing in, yeah. in games uh, I, mean, I know i'm gonna get some flack for it i just don't personally see this type of thing as that big of a deal if they rebalance the game and um adjust drop rates to push you into buying these things absolutely i will be freaking out when they do that but they but, won't they won't i don't think I they think. will and the game that they no. provided is amazing without 
microtransactions. Yeah. So just don't buy the damn microtransactions. Yeah, and there's not a store in the game. It's it's really like you only see it when booting up the game on your platform. So um, it's not like <laughs> Ubisoft yeah. is, yeah, they, they, they're not they're popping up with like, <laughs> oh, having trouble with this boss? Buy some more wake stones. They're not doing that. Uh, I, no, that would be crazy. <laughs> Can you imagine if they did? Um, uh, let's see. Oh, I see some people say that the fa- it's more the fact that they hid it from the, the reviewers, but that's not true either because it was in the review guide. Um, just not a lot of people read that because <laughs> they don't want the spoilers. Uh, we get like, so. a, yeah, we can conclude that. Um, and I also think, and I'm not. I mean, of course, they can maybe, yeah, do that differently. But usually, these microtransactions or things appear when the game actually launches. That's always like I always try to get some Helix credits before release for as a screed or Ubisoft games to yeah show these items and tell people um, like. Uh, Hey, if you want to dress up like the blood dragon guy, you can do that. Yeah. Uh, but oh, I do have. I can't do that before launch. So I, I will just say this because I just dug through my email and found I can't show it to you guys because it's they don't want it shared. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, they do give us information saying the maximum number of port crystals that can be purchased is one. You can't buy ten of them and plop them all over the map. So okay, you can only ever That's... buy one. Um, wake stones, you can buy up to five. The, uh, packs of rift crystals are all over the place. So you can buy like one yeah, of yeah. the 2,500, four of the others. Yeah. Um, character editor thing. You can only do that once the makeshift jail key. You can only buy one of those. All the others, only one camping kit, only one harpy smoke beacon, only one. Yeah, so pen. then is it worth it? Because the wheels, they're not going to get the wheels because they, they, they are like, what the heck? Can I only buy one? So yeah, it's, it's kind of like weird. What it comes off to me as is that this is like a Capcom publisher executive thing where they're like, hey, put microtransactions out in the game. And they're like, okay. And they did it because yeah. they checked the box from the publisher. And then they just move on. Because I agree. I don't know who the hell is buying these things, <laughs> especially because it'll yeah. make the game worse. But yeah, you again, usually hear that that there are like maybe five percent of the people buying the microtransactions, but because there are like zero point five percent of those people are wills and they buy everything, that makes it worth it. But mm-hmm. that's not even possible here. So yeah, but okay, um, yeah, uh, rise of the road. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> rise of the road. Tell me, so yeah. I I've had an inkling with rise of the Ronin. For yeah, you. Uh, a while. I, I had some people in the the chat from uh, my stream say uh, that Luke was right, so that was <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's <laughs> there were some red flags about it. Uh, but why don't you tell us what your experience with the game has been like, in case anybody's uh, not been able to see the review yeah. yet? Yeah, of course the the full review is on the channel, and uh, people were kind of surprised, and 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 I get it because so how it worked is was I I could first do a preview of the first five hours. Um, and then, yeah, continue playing and make a review based on that. And I lo- yeah, liked the first five hours way more because at that point it wasn't... I was still... Yeah, of course, in a preview, when you get hands-on with a game, you want to stay optimistic and be like, yo, this is a huge open-world game. And it usually gets the better, story... right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hope so. Um, which which often happens. I, I I would argue that, for example, Dragon's Dogma only gets better uh, if you get further into it. But uh, for for Rise of the Ronin, the open world structure there are like only six types of activity. So in the first few hours, it's kind of fun. But if you then realize if you get to a new region that's basically the same, um, yeah, that does not work. But it was in particular, of course, for people who are totally not aware, it's like a the PS5 exclusive. Um, it's it's from Team Ninja. They did Neo, Wolong, and really the core issue with this game is that they were they wanted to make two games, but they mo- yeah blended them together, and what you get is a very yeah incoherent package. It's super weird because if you do the main quest, you're only going from very small linear instance mission to very small linear instant mission with some open world stuff in between. Um, and these main missions, yeah, are like 10 to 15 minutes and they're all the same. 
The locations look pretty cool. They're all varied, but you still have to kill every enemy. Um, and then there's a boss at the end. And the combat is really great. That that That's what's kind of helping this game. But still, if I kind of go for these, yeah, to these games like a Ghost of Tsushima or Assassin's Creed also for the story. And you in particular know the Assassin's Creed titles always have like a really cool ending. Um, Ghost of Tsushima had very cool characters. And if you wanted to learn more about them, there were cool side missions. And in this game, there are these... Um, there are multiple characters, like qu quite a lot of them, actually. And they, because they need every main mission is the same, they need to have that boss at the end. You get into very weird situations where the mission is, yo, uh, your friend is, um, um, you have to tell your friend that his boss is captured, so we have to rescue them. So yeah, you go do that in the main mission. You kill some some talks that are like in that area sure and then you meet this guy that you're that you have to talk to the mission objective really says to talk to this person and then he grabs a pole arm and you're like okay let's do this and you fight with like lethal weapons you do like insane combos blood everywhere and then the the fight ends and it's like well oh, nice fight so why do you come here and i'm like what like what happened here why am i fighting this this companion that i just here to tell about uh this this sort of story uh, or that this friend is captured and stuff like that happens very often and it really takes away from the story like one moment you're chilling with a companion um and then the next moment that companion is the final boss of that main mission it's super weird and when stuff like that happens i just could not care about the story anymore and when you combine that with an open world that is not interesting. Um, and yeah, like I like to do the bandit camps, obviously, but this game has them. The combat makes it kind of fun. Like the bosses you fight there are varied in terms of like, I mean, there are totally this, the same enemies that you fight uh, all the time, but still they have like different weapons. They do some different moves. So that's kind of fun. But if there's no reward for doing them, if at one point you figure out, okay, I'm just grabbing new loot with a higher number and there are perks on it, but it's all very limited. Like they only give 5% more of this during nights. You're like, okay, well, what am I doing here? What? And, and I kind of hit that point after 30 hours and I was like, I don't want to continue playing. Mm -hmm. And and that's kind of wild for, for me in these types of games um, that just every element, and there are a lot of elements just yeah did not hit and then you have a co-op as well and you can only do co-op in these very small main missions um so not even in the open world which would have been cool but no only in these main missions and maybe that is the reason why they wanted to have a boss at the end of every main mission to have something cool to do in co-op but the problem is if you play this game in co-op for one if you go to a mission you can like select co-op you can invite a friend but that friend can only join you if they are either at that point in the story or have already completed the mission. And if mm. you would play together at the same time, you would be playing in co-op, then you would go back to the open world alone, then you would do the sort of narrative part where you would talk to NPCs, then you would get to the main mission, you would have to invite your friend again. And it's like, there are so many elements, it all doesn't work together. Like, they really had to pick a lane. Like, are you going to be this main mission, like more Neo style game? Or are you going to be this huge open world with uh, cool things to do? Um, yeah, and that hopefully connects the dots in other parts as well. So I was kind of disappointed overall. I expected more and the game is, is the worst looking PS5 <laughs> exclusive it, by a long shot. It's kind of wild. Uh, yeah, that video you posted looks. on Twitter... Yeah, oh, <laughs> that was great. Yeah, and that was with the day one patch. I'm not sure if you uh, saw the review because I actually was ready to go even more ham on it because there were even parts where there were only seven people on the street, max. And I would get frame drops left and right. It would look extremely ugly. But then they did release the day one patch, which kind of tweaked that. So 
well, yeah, luckily that that kind of fixed those issues. But I was like, how can this game run this poorly, look this bad, and be exclusive to the PS5? Yeah, uh, I don't know what happened. And we were talking last week about like the potential brand damage it could do to PlayStation putting PlayStation Studios or yeah. PlayStation Interactive Entertainment on the the box. Because when people see this in the store, they're like, oh, it's Sony. So, like, it's probably Ghost of Tsushima levels of of polish and refinement and beauty and production value. And it's not. <laughs> it is no. crazy. Like, I don't even really understand what's happening in some of these shots. It's so horrifyingly, like, rough. And this is after the patch. Like... It, it yeah, just... I could have gone like I could have been like here's the footage of me actually playing, but I, I was like, yeah, I have to show the day one patch. But still, it looks bad. The shadows popping in and out—it's crazy. It's ridiculous, man. Uh, but I mean, it it goes to show you like I've talked before about um, when games try to do something new, they will then be held to that standard. So, you know, if if you're talking about Rise of the Ronin, it's going open world. Yeah, okay, you go open world as a studio. It's one of your first like forays into this this uh, kind of style of game um, or with Starfield, you try to go space sim, you know, whenever you go into this thing and you put yourself into that category, you're going to be judged against the others that have done it as well, maybe for the same price or in the same category and, and ballpark. And for them that like they're charging full price, full double A or for rather yes, like $70. Yeah. And so it's going to be compared to ghost of Tsushima from years ago. And when the game looks significantly worse, it runs way worse. It has bizarre choices made, but it's all under the Sony banner. It reflects really poorly in my mind on Sony. It, it just makes them look like, okay, so quality control is out the window. Is that what we're doing? Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I'm curious because that that's kind of what you see if you make a review about uh, about the game that people pre-ordered a lot. So you, you see a lot of like copium, like, no, th uh, this other person said that this is actually good. So I'm I'm going to listen to them. And I'm like, sure, I, I hope you, you enjoy it. But there was this one, th this conspiracy. There was this one guy like in the comments, like talking to everyone that was like, oh, this does kind of look bad. No, uh, he's just a bad player. And he also said, yeah, Ubisoft paid him to make this game look bad. So <laughs> Assassin's Creed Red looks better when it releases. And I'm like, wow, something. How can you come up with those theories? Yeah, man. But <laughs> it's, I, I, you know what? If we lived in that world where YouTubers just got cut massive checks <laughs> as part yeah. of these like interwoven theories that would be you know i mean I, you wouldn't i mean that would totally easily come up and then it would be the end of you like we've seen many youtubers canceled because of yeah things they did uh, and rightfully so so well, i, I also, don't like, think the you could company could that. be like attacked by regulators and sued by right like that's oh yeah that's not allowed <laughs> like they <laughs> yeah. if you've ever done a brand deal they are very strict like you have to say uh, you know, hashtag ad or sponsored or, or you have to do paid promotion tags on YouTube. Like they're very, very clear about it. Um, even for reviews, they typically want you to be like, thank you to X publisher for the review code, yeah, that yeah. type of thing. So it's just so funny. Like, so we're going to half admit to things. Like, so I was, I got the review code from Sony or from whoever, uh, but I'm not going to disclose a relationship with something like it just doesn't make any sense. The whole thing is insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, but it, it, they're they're just looking for for things, and then uh, like I I just I wanted this to be great. Trust me. Oh wait, my foot is here, so I will be yeah, okay. Go for it. Yeah, no, I I mean I think we've all been hoping that this would pull off, you know, pull itself off. But it's just you can't you can't lie when the evidence is in your face. And in this case, like we can see clearly there are major issues and to excuse this kind of stuff away requires a level of cope that I, I just don't know <laughs> how it's manageable. Um, like I get, maybe you can excuse all this stuff for sake of the combat system. If you really like the combat, cool. But for 70 bucks, man, it's hard to argue that this is tolerable. Like this is the game running well and it's like this, you know, it's just, 
it's crazy but unfortunately I, i'm curious the they're your thoughts like where you get more time with it and um, i think you should do a video on it if you uh... i'll i'll try probably putting in another couple hours i want to get to the more of the open world stuff and see what it has to offer but it, i mean it's not easy to go open world it's just not it's quite difficult it takes a different skill set and technologically speaking it's much more demanding and i think this game just yeah. shows you you can't just take an old dro old dog have it do a bunch of new tricks it's really not easy to do um and you're yeah, seeing and, and kind of the, the growing pains of it yeah and and it's like the first few hours you're you're unlocking a new feature like left and right and i'm like stop it with all these you have like a bond system so every character you meet you can like level up your bond with them but it's very easy like do a side quest with them give them a gift or make a choice that they like but it takes forever to unlock like a new level and then you get like a reward and there are i'm not kidding like more than 20 or or 30 of these characters i'm like what what do they expect me to do and you have this we already talked about it in the the previous episode about the the cats that you can pet okay it's like fun to do one two cats maybe uh, and there's like a small twist to it where the cat is asleep so you have to like sneak up to it but there are like 70 cats in the open world that you have to find it's like that's why why is there so much stuff in this game um when yeah you could have just focused on a few core things and i think this game would have been way better and that's why i think the neos and the wolongs were better because those were they were clearly uh yeah they clearly knew what they wanted and I think they that those were the games that they maybe more wanted to make. You really see still this 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 souls like sort of DNA that they now have with the Neo titles in this game where they're using a lot of things or they're introducing a lot of like things to make this game more accessible. Like the difficulty was a big question, of course. Um is it hard? Now there are three difficulties, so that's nice. And they do many things to make the game easier, but you're still at one point out of nowhere like you're you're feeling good you got like a great loadout you're like okay this is going pretty well then there's this boss like pretty early in the game and it's like sekiro level <laughs> crazy it's like woo, woo, like it does insane attacks and you're like what what am i supposed to do and you're you're parrying and you're and it's like way tougher than any other boss you've killed so i was stuck like for for 40 minutes there and i was like am i doing something wrong but no did they still have those yeah, very high, yeah, skilled enemies there. And I do think that that's also going to be a turnoff for people, especially because at one point you will fight a boss 1v1. And then 20 minutes later, that boss sometimes is like, oh, um, f thank you for the... F or like, you, you, th these people are like infiltrating this sort of area and you have to fight them off and you're protecting something important and then you kill them and they're like, that's uh, all for today. Goodbye. And then they just walk away like, no, I want you dead. Like, why, why are you just walking away? And then the next, like, 20 minutes, you're fighting that boss again with another boss. So there's, like, duo bosses. And like, well, I was already struggling against this one guy. Why are there two of them suddenly? So it's crazy. There, there, there's just so much in this game. It just that, seems that like that a quintessential get. example of, like, biting off more than they could chew. They decided yeah, they yeah, wanted yeah. to go with like Ghost of Tsushima, but still do their old school combat stuff. But then they also wanted like some Ubisoft side activities, petting cats and things like they just wanted to do everything. And then they kind of learned the hard way that you can't, or at least it's really yeah. tough to do that much. And I, I, it seems at least from all of the, um, like the graphical problems, the technical problems, it seems like they probably just didn't have the the hardware or the uh, the the engine capabilities to keep up with their vision. I mean, maybe this is one of those situations, kind of like The Witcher One. You go back, you play the original Witcher game, and it's like, oh baby, it, it shows that this was like their first foray into this type of thing. Is technically first foray into anything. Um, yeah. And then they got better as they learned the lessons from the last one. So maybe the next game they do is going to also be an open world game and they'll take lessons they learn from this and improve the technology and build it and build it and build it. And maybe in a couple more releases, they'll be able to just drop pretty regular, you know, Elden Ring clones and that'll be great. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. this is not <laughs> it, it seems. <laughs> 
Yeah, but I, it, it's probably because Sony also came in and were like, yeah, 2024 is looking very, not so great for us. Can you make, maybe they were like working on it as like a very smaller title. And they were like, this looks great. Can we like turn this into a bigger thing? And then they were like, okay, let's, let's do it. Um, that could also be uh, the case. Um, because we of course heard that Sony won't have like a big title until at least April 2025. So that's why Stellar Blade and Rise of the Ronin are kind of, yeah, taking the spotlight so far, but uh, yeah, it's it, it, yeah, it's not great, and uh, I'm curious what 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 people will think uh, when they finally uh, yeah get get more hands on it. So yeah, we'll see. I mean, the the broader thing I think for for today with two games launching, um, Rise of the Ronin and Dragon's Dogma Two, is just that unfortunately for whatever reason right now games that well, it technically runs is the new standard. Like, yeah, you can technically play Rise of the Ronin and get to the credits. That's true. And Dragon's Dogma 2, it's like, for some PCs, you just can't play it. Some people are reporting crashes and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, we have now uh, Livy in the chat saying as well. Yeah, can't yeah. Even play the game on PC, keeps crashing, sucks to hear. Yeah, and that's, that's great. And I genuinely, I have no idea why some PCs are able to run it others crash like i was able to run it on an rog ally which is a handheld gaming pc basically and i was able to play it there on low settings at Damn. like 27 28 frames um it didn't look great but it worked but then other people are having you know they have like a thousand two thousand three thousand dollar pc and they can't even get the thing to boot so i have no idea what's happening it's well above my pay grade but that yeah, type of thing yeah. is is ridiculous you absolutely should refund when that happens um and even when it's running properly on a very nice computer, it still is all over the place with performance, especially in cities and stuff, you know, super hardcore CPU bottlenecked and stuff. So it's just frustrating um, to see that the standards for performance for AAA releases seem to be dropping, which is... yeah extremely annoying and frustrating where was i playing on 4k with those 30 to 40 frames yeah so uh, pretty much all of the uh, almost all of my gameplay was running with dlss enabled to get to 4k it wasn't native 4k or anything um so for a good chunk of the game i was playing on quality and then for another portion of the game i was playing on balanced um they issued a patch a few days in that improved performance a good bit but didn't like magically fix everything um so yeah yeah who knows as we have uh yeah oh sorry it. now we have master mg saying horizon forbidden west at least looks incredible on pc so there's a positive for the week <laughs> 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 what is the steam numbers on that though are you, what do you want to guess i think uh should i say the the max for for, for horizon zero dawn so you can kind of take it from there sure it was fifty five thousand. I mean, I think for this, I've heard like no one talk about it. Yeah. Like no one. So I'm going to guess. It's I'm going to guess 5,000. Oh, wow. No, I was surprised when I saw these numbers. I was I was with you and it's still I don't I don't know who makes these decisions. Why launch this game this week? It's crazy, but it's at 26,000. Wow. That is five times higher than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. I just was surprised. Like nobody was, was talking about it. I had no idea it was dropping until somebody in chat on like Monday mentioned it. I was like, really? That's happening already? I just kind of put it out of my mind, thought it was like April or something, but no. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, PlayStation did zero marketing for it. That's right. Because uh, I think they were marketing yeah. Rise of the Ronin instead. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's kind of funny, by the way, as well. I got like a notification that YouTube Gaming, the Twitter account, shared yes. my, uh, shared a video. Did you see it? Yeah, we looked at it on stream. They just casually forgot to mention a pretty important part of your review, too. No, no, no. The, the crazy part is they shared my preview. <laughs> oh. Oops. <laughs> so they shared my video from uh, two weeks ago instead of my... Yeah, disappointing review. So they were like, "Oh, he, he's like, oh, it's pretty cool." But no, I... that's amazing. Wow, that's how is that possible? Yeah. 
Oh, did you guys hear about the Will Smith zombie game that nobody heard about? It launched and flopped because they said nothing about it. Yeah, I saw the little story about it. They apparently some some company hired Will Smith to be a like spokesperson or to be in a commercial and he has like a skin in the game, but they never distributed the trailer anywhere, so it just didn't do anything. So like they probably paid him a million bucks to do that and it went yeah, nowhere. <laughs> Big old oh swing and a miss there. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, Rise of the Ronin, a little bit of a weren't weren't. Um, yeah, I'm curious there if you get more time with it, maybe we can like revisit it, and maybe if other people uh, in the chat uh, have something to say as well when they get their hands on it. Although I, I, I was even, and I don't have that often. Like people were like, okay, but at what price point do you rec? I, I just don't. I, I just really think that time is more precious than spe than spending it on Rise of the Ronin, and I'm not often like that. I'm not often that I'm like, so I. And that was also, of course, a thing. People were like, oh, you recommended Suicide Squad. But he and I'm like, I did not recommend Suicide if you watched the video. But, of course, that's how the internet works. Yeah. I only said, I still think if it's like $20 or on Game Pass, I think it's worth it to just play through the campaign. Um, and I don't think it's worth it to touch. Right? Yeah, I'd say like for $70. Yeah, it's like Game Pass, especially if they... they catch it like yeah, yeah you'll like, get 10 hours out of it sure it's, yeah it's, it's like, a terrible live and, service game but yeah you'll get 10 hours yeah out of it. they're gonna do the, the the season one though next week are yeah. you gonna check it out yeah i'm gonna be checking that out uh, yeah I, I know i don't know i mean i i would love for it to be like 10 hours of new content and a, all new areas and combat and craziness like new boss encounters but let's be real it's gonna be 20 minutes of a cutscene to introduce you know teenage angsty wish.com joker and then they're going to um have a few waves of missions and then a reskinned brainiac fight that's probably like green lantern this time instead of the flash oh yeah they they, they already showed that and then the mid-season update will have superman so yeah, yeah I, I really think in, in, i'm gonna try everything in one stream let's see if, if i can uh, make that happen <laughs> yeah, <you should. laughs> probably gonna yeah it, it's kind of wild man it's uh but I mean, there will at least be now six missions in the rotation instead of three. So <laughs> yeah, so we're getting there. <laughs> we're on our way. We're getting way. <laughs> there. So in three months, we have nine missions. But then those six you've already played a lot of won't be that exciting. It's going to be interesting. But uh, yeah, I will be streaming the Joker. At least uh, I want to see how he fires a pistol. That would be exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Too bad Batman's already gone. I uh, could have put that pistol. I mean, there. is he though? That's the the theory, right? Like, I really think they're just gonna bring back waves. They're gonna be like, he was an evil clone. Now you get to do it again, and they're, yeah, they're just yeah, gonna yeah, keep doing yeah. that kind of thing. So, um, one thing that did actually look very good this week, though, that came out of left field, and I had no idea of. Um, I realize I'm bouncing yeah. around a little bit. I apologize. No, no, that. but that's fine. That's fine. Um, rise of Hydra. This was shown off so, yeah. as part of the like Unreal Engine showcase thing that they were doing with GDC. And basically, it's uh, from a studio headed up by Amy Hennig. And if you guys don't know Amy, she is one of the like head honchos, one of the OGs from Naughty Dog. She was one of the people that like created the Uncharted franchise. And um, she left Naughty Dog after Uncharted 3 in the crossover to Uncharted 4. There were some disputes. Uh, I've talked about it before in videos, but basically it looks like they just had some creative differences. She liked doing more campy, like Hollywood blockbuster style things that don't take themselves too seriously. Naughty Dog really wanted to go the Last of Us direction and ground things more. And she had other exciting opportunities, like a Star Wars project, all sorts of stuff. So she left and had a bunch of her games and projects canceled for like a decade. And then we heard news that she was working on some other stuff. And we didn't know what it was. We heard rumblings, but didn't really know. And then we got a uh, like an actual trailer for it. And this thing is ridiculous. I mean, this is running in Unreal Engine 5.4. And I mean, if you think it looks too good to be true, if you think it looks graphically insane, they actually showcased as part of it, um, demos of the technology working. So they were able to like move the camera freely and change the particle effects and um, remove the mask from characters and all sorts of crazy stuff. Like this is actually running, probably running on a $5,000 PC, but it's actually running. And 
uh, it, it just looks crazy. So it's a, a new game targeting 2025. It's set in 1943 with Captain America, Black Panther. It looks extremely high production value. Very, very cinematic. Yeah, you yeah you don't expect it because it's kind of a new team. It's like Skydance Media. Like uh, yeah, so they got they got the goods. But I think like Unreal Engine Five makes everything. Uh, look great i mean immortals of course also looked really good um yeah but yeah we have to see gameplay like that that's kind of the thing you already said it it's like how will this play did we see gameplay i'm like looking at the the captain america part where he like throws his shield and then hits like multiple enemies was that like a the start of like a a combat encounter is that like a finisher or is this all a cutscene? so yeah, I mean, I what know. what this reminded me of when I saw it was the Order eighteen eighty six for a couple of reasons. Oh. For one, it looks graphically stunning, as did the Order eighteen eighty six. Secondly, they did the cinematic thing where they do a wider aspect ratio with the black bars on top and bottom, and that's something that the Order eighteen eighty six did specifically because it means you only have to render like the frames in the center. You don't have to render the black bars. So you're physically like, well, not physically, but you're actually rendering less pixels, which allows for more frame time to be spent on the rest of the image. So you can increase fidelity since you're effectively running it at a lower resolution. So, you know, it's in that case, that was a game that looked stunning, but when it came to gameplay, it was like, wasn't super strong and it was very very short because they had put so much effort into the presentation so i I, this doesn't mean that this is going to be a great game it could very well be like a three hour like sort of novel visual novel with some quick time events that could be all it is um or maybe it's it's actually like a huge you know semi open world adventure game or something no, but yeah. i think more likely it's a very small uh in scope linear narrative game where you're going to be oogling and ogling at the cool graphics and stuff and it's going to be like an interna- excuse me interactive movie um that's what my gut would would predict because that's typically how these types of games go when they look it's this just good, but weird we'll that they are not talking about that that's kind of the red flag here i think um like i want to of course be really optimistic but we never see a story trailer as the first trailer for a game like that never happens so obviously this was like a unreal engine 5 um sort of event so it kind of makes sense but i do think you would get ahead of it if if there was a lot of good news like oh this is a big game blah blah blah. so i think yeah saying that it's probably going to be pretty small um would make sense yeah but uh i mean well i i think it looks great i do think there's a market for people who want basically like a four hour marvel thing that just looks pretty yeah um i think if they charge 70 bucks for it they're in trouble but i do like i know people who are crazy into marvel and would pay probably 30 40 bucks for just a really cool little experience like this and this might be the start of kind of that that they're like okay let, let's make a smaller uh smaller game and then because i, I also think like for for example a subscription like game pass kind of I mean, it's not coming to Game Pass, but in general, that's, of course, kind of where the industry is moving towards to. To have, like, they can better have a new game every month that's, like, five hours because then people keep subscribing instead of three big titles uh, that, yeah, people still play in one month and then unsubscribe for. So mm-hmm. maybe this game does really well because if you look at it, like, the Marvel games... You would think uh, we we talked about it before, but they have not been a huge success. Guardians of the Galaxy underperformed. Uh, Avengers, of course, huge flop. Um, like maybe this is the way for them to go uh, to to yeah to not be this like game that people can play for a long time uh, or that has like this huge budget, but instead be yeah. it's like a very cool cinematic like a Marvel movie. Yeah, um, but that you can then actually play. They're like, hey, that people like cool. Marvel movies. Let's just make an interactive one, and charge yeah. forty bucks for it. Like, I, I think that yeah, that the, probably works better than where. Yeah, Avengers. where's the info though? Yeah, we know it's coming twenty twenty five, but that's kind of it, and that's 
usually you don't bury that unless it's like kind of bad news so that they, they or maybe they don't know yet um it could be up in but, the air i mean it could be that this yeah. was you know part of the the epic contract for the unreal engine demo it was like hey you're, we're gonna give you this huge platform you showcase some of the tech and everything make it look really cool and then you'll get to actually like formally announce it and do like a big trailer at the game awards or summer game fest or something um, yeah, I I agree. Like it's if the news were really good, or if the news was that hey, this is actually like a big open world, or actually this is uh, an adventure game that's thirty hours long. Like if they if they could brag about that, I think they would brag about it. And the fact that they aren't probably shows it's going to be something much smaller and more lean. Yeah, and that's not. Not bad. Bad. It's just they they need to be clear with the expectations because the problem with the order eighteen eighty six was that they charged full price for it and then people got it and were getting through it in five six yeah, hours. Yeah, and it was like one of the first PS four exclusives, so everyone's like, "Oh, this looks awesome." And they never were really clear about that, I think. And also, the final boss was just the same as a mean a mid game boss fight, so it was like, "What?" Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I remember still, when great I, game. Like, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I was just going to say, I remember when I played the Order 1886 for the first time and like I did the big boss fight and I was like, okay, here the game starts and then the credits roll. And it's like, yeah, what? That sucks. <laughs> we, we will never know what what, uh, what happened. But uh, yeah, that, that that was weird. That was, but, but it is still a game that you remember. So it did leave a mark and going back to something like Rise of the Ronin, I don't think people will remember it. After yeah. A few weeks. I mean, that's one thing you got to give it credit for. I mean, what other games a decade after launch are still being compared for their graphical prowess and stuff. Like yeah. we pulled up on stream on Wednesday after this dropped, uh, the original announcement trailer for the order 1886 from like 2013. And that game, if that was right. released today would still be very, very passable. Like, yeah, it's crazy. It was so far ahead of its time, but are they still, uh, around ready at dawn? They were bought by Oculus, but of course making, yeah, VR they, games, but... They've been doing VR stuff. They did that one that's like in space. Um, that one Lone VR Echo. Game. Yeah. And I, I've i played that one. That one's good. But it's most of the like hardcore narrative talent, it seems, went to Naughty Dog and Santa Monica. Um, oh, yeah. So they live on, but not at Ready at Dawn, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, well, one more thing about, uh, about this game. I, I really hope that they you say, okay, show at the Summer Game Fest. I don't know if we, if this is like a short game. I I would prefer to see it when it launches, like a week later or something, because th that's kind of the thing with Marvel. They sometimes can overshow things, and if this is a four-hour experience, then you can only show so much. Yeah. Um, but it is interesting. I, for me, it was interesting to see that there, even though Marvel is kind of in a uh, in a low, and I see some people. Uh, RS uh, NOS saying I'm personally burned out of the Marvel stuff. I know many people are, mm -hmm. but still, this trailer had like has like 3.4 million views on the the Marvel channel, and there are probably a real uploads as well. I did a tweet about it that blew up, so there is still hype for it, and I think them going for like the uh, 9043, it looking this great. I am, uh, yeah, the, there's still like an audience, obviously, for this. And uh, I did not see anything. Of course, when Guardians was announced, oh, I did not like Avengers. I'm not gonna buy this. So I did not see anything about that. So it seems like we moved away from that. I hope this, uh, yeah, this hits for them. Yeah, and I, I hope you know it's another great showing for Amy because Amy's been kind of AFK for a decade, basically. Yeah, um, sucks. And it's too bad because she really is like one of the leading video game designers in the industry when you look at her portfolio. But she's just had trouble getting things out the door because she keeps partnering with like EA or, you know, whatever other company that just ends up, well, we actually overhired. Everybody's fired, you know, just yeah. canning everybody. So we don't like single player games anymore. But why did you hire me for a single player game? Yeah, you've already spent like $20 million on this. What are you doing? Yeah. But that, it just is what it is. But hopefully this is uh, the start of her comeback because it looks really good. But I, I think the yeah. big thing is just going to be setting expectations. If it's quick time events, okay, but be clear. 
The worst thing for this would be to just keep it kind of coy like it is now and then release it for 70 bucks and people play it. It's three and a half hours long and it's all like quick time events like that. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. when you'll have a problem. But um, yeah, for if, sure. If they're clear, they can dodge it. Um, yeah, I, I put in one extra thing. I don't think we can we don't have to like talk long about it, but if, I still thought it was interesting. Yeah. Um, so this is from uh, uh, Reuters. There, they they had like a, an article about Tencent, um, and of course Tencent is kind of the developer behind the Assassin's Creed Jade game. So that's the mobile game. Did you play it? Not yet, right? No, I never got the invite. Okay. No, I, I it was also playable at Gamescom. That's where I got my hands on it. And it's basically Assassin's Creed Odyssey for your phone in ancient China, which kind of crazy. Um, but similar to what we kind of discussed with. Um, yeah, people kind of moving away from licensed games with EA, of course, canceling that uh, that uh, uh, Mandalorian title. Um, and yeah, basically the the amount of money you have to pay to these companies like a Marvel or a Marvel Disney is so much that the game has to reach like way higher uh, sales numbers to be yeah on the same level uh, in terms of profitability versus a title you own yourself. And that seems to be kind of going on with Tencent. So they have been not doing too hot. They are, of course, enormous, um, like the bi- biggest Chinese um, media company, I think. I think over globally, there. also, they're the biggest yeah. revenue maker in gaming. Yeah. Yeah, which is crazy. Um, and they, yeah, they've been working on the Sesquid Jade for four years, according to this article. But instead of, and they said during Gamescom that it was going to launch. And yeah, this year, and they kind of made they they had the booth, they made a big deal about it, but it seems that they are kind of stepping away from it. They're still going to launch it, but they put redeployed hundreds of staff from the team developing Jade into its recently released party game, Dreamstar. I'm not even sure if Dreamstar is out here, but that's something they own themselves. And uh, like if I type in Dreamstar, I get nothing about a game. Yeah, on Google, let's see. Mm. Dreamstar game. I think it's like only in China then still. It seems it, it seems like Fall Guys. Yeah, it's like Fall Guys. <laughs> oh my god. It it is like if you can look up gameplay, it's, it's just straight. Fall Guys. Fall Guys. <sighs> and and like all the, the party animals and those sort of games like combined. <laughs> so um so yeah, imagine working on Jade and then having to go go to this game. That's a kind of kind of a change. Oh yeah. But uh <laughs> but but yeah, they, they're seeing a lot of like uh success with that and they own that. So yeah, it makes sense that they wanna yeah, focus on that. Um and like the latest part of a pivot at Tencent, which now looking to move away from developing Western franchise for mobile to do thin margins. Again, they they already paid a lot to Ubisoft to have the Assassin's Creed license, but probably every microtransaction uh, spent on that game, Ubisoft will probably get a percentage of that as well. So everything in Dreamstar is 100% for Tencent, or 100%, of course, they have to share it with iOS and and Google as well. But uh, yeah, that that seems to be more again moving to in-house things that that you fully own that you get more money from. But it's kind of weird now with Assassin's Creed Jade because they were yeah doing this huge marketing push. Um, and it already, it's basically Assassin's Creed Odyssey again. They, they, they do have some cool systems like a co-op, um, but also in, yeah, instance missions. Um, there, yeah, were some mythical bosses you could fight together as well. Uh, there was this story. So again, it was pretty crazy for a, a mobile title to be this like big open world RPG, but the systems again, were really like based on Assassin's Creed Odyssey. So if Assassin's Creed Red releases at the end of this year and we play that and that is like basically the spiritual successor to Odyssey from that team, I think Jade will look and feel even more dated than it already kind of was. So maybe on mobile people will be like, oh, but it's still great because I can play it everywhere. But I do think it's going to hurt the game quite a lot having launching after Red right. when that game has like a sick post launch as well. Um, because I do think there will be some overlap. But yeah, Tencent making more money from their own games, which also kind of makes sense. But yeah, it's not a good... It's an interesting... I think mostly 
like I know a lot, not a lot of people will care about the Jade game, but it's mostly once again this sort of companies looking yeah at their own IP. EA of course said that as well. We're we're focusing more on our own RP move, moving forward because yeah, we own that that we can do everything we want. Yeah. And it, it all of this just reminds me again of like what happened with EA where EA recently announced they're trying to move away from licensed um, franchises. They want to do stuff that they own the rights to 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 maximize margin and revenue. Um or rather profits over revenue. And yeah. I think it's because a lot of these big mega corporations it's all about make number go up. Like that's all they're trying to do. All the executives care about bigger numbers. That's what you want. So you can either get new customers to make those numbers go up because more people buying things. Okay. We make more, but when you run out of more people or people are not, you know, you're not seeing the same growth. It's kind of stagnating. You start to look for other ways to increase margin. One of the ways to do that is to try to shift and pivot off of uh, licensed deals where like you said you're paying 30 percent of every dollar spent to the app store and then ubisoft maybe takes another 20 30 percent so like i think yeah yeah like something like that you start yeah. to lose over half of the the revenue or we just say half the revenue um on each dollar when you could well, the costs are the same yeah the costs <laughs> like the are the cost, same yeah you're paying the same developers you're <laughs> And you hope that because it's a Assassin's Creed, more people will look at it as, uh, like, if they made Jade Odyssey or whatever. Uh, I know that's is it actually a game? Yeah, uh, there's like a, an old, <laughs> yeah. But uh, then, like, you would get everything. But will people care about it? Like, we would not be talking about it right now, for example. So yeah. So we'll we'll see kind of how it develops. But it is interesting to see them kind of casually pivoting off of it. Um, yeah before it's even technically out it's it's just interesting but i think they would have if they launched it around the red when red was like in the hype because i'm really what do you think uh, to kind of um yeah make a small side uh, i mean i have here. to think there's probably a little bit of crossover but as far as i can tell red is supposed to be like the next evolution of the franchise it's going to be on you know current gen hardware it's going to be very graphically impressive and i agree that'll make jade look out of date but jade is also like a mobile game and i i think that there's a lot of people out there who don't have modern consoles who would yeah, still yeah, like yeah. to play um so i don't think no, it would be like a total loss it definitely wouldn't no, but I, as well I, I, yeah but I, but what what, uh, what what i meant was that um i do think that if they um i basically had two questions like one was i do think that if they had it out when the red marketing machine was kind of going oh, so when yeah. we got the cinematic trailer for it and the screenshots uh and yeah the first information and people are like oh wow i can't wait wait there's a an rpg i can play right now they might jump to the phone while they otherwise won't because otherwise like i got red already why would i play this on my phone which is probably the inferior game yeah um so maybe that would have helped, but I'm also curious. What do you think? Will will we see Fahola excitement levels for Red? I think, um, I mean, I think so because I'm anticipating it when we finally see it. I think it is going to look like a notable leap forward, and I think that's one thing that perhaps Mirage actually unintentionally is helping Ubisoft with. Is we got Mirage, and it's with an old tool set. It, it did what it needed to do. It was good, but um, it was still Valhalla, basically, just with a bunch of really complicated reskins. And I, my understanding is that Red's going to be much more of a step forward, even a leap forward in some ways. And so I think it's going to show a lot better and it will show like, wow, the, some progress has been made. They're doing some new stuff. And I think that's going to be very exciting for a lot of people. Um, yeah, And I think, you know, the the difficulties of rise of the Ronin also probably help. Um, <sighs> so it looks like the check they gave you. Maybe to, Ubisoft <laughs> paid the helped. developers on rise of the Ronin to make that game less great. Yeah. What's more be... likely a grand conspiracy, <laughs> or maybe it's just not very good. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, I think it's going to be big. I, I, the only thing is that, the Assassin's Creed Infinity stuff starts to get me more and more worried the more I hear about it. Oh, like yeah, the yeah. Insider Gaming Report where they're like, yeah, and there's going to be mini battle passes for each game. And it's like... Oh I really God. think we won't <laughs> hear about that till like 
one week before or like a few weeks before launch like those details right because they usually save the post launch for later and they know like they they got some free sort of look at what the reaction will be thanks to tom henderson so i'm, I'm they're probably gonna be like let's first sell them on this epic uh japanese adventure and then talk about the the microtransactions and the details yeah. so yeah. i'm sure that when we hopefully get the chance to interview one of those people and we ask them about it it's like yeah, you know, we we get we will not talk about infinity we're only focused on uh reds or whatever they will end up calling it mm-hmm. so uh but looking at the cinematic trailer for Valhalla, like the views were insane for that let's see 9.3 million i thought it was more but that's still a lot compared to most yeah there's re-uploads still... on ign on every game spot everywhere yeah yeah, yeah. It. Um, oh yeah and they yeah i mean it depends i think also when they announce it when did they drop that trailer April twenty six. I thought my April something. Uh, April thirtieth. April thirtieth, twenty twenty. Okay. So I mean, if they do something similar, it's we're maybe one month away. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, I'm still waiting on Star Wars Outlaws. I feel like that's just been AFK as well. But um, I don't. It's... Oh, we have breaking news. Oh, really? Yeah. GTA 6 production reportedly falling behind. Rockstar urges staff to return to the office to avoid a delay. Oh. So is that how they're going to get them back in the office? Is that- <laughs> <laughs> Kotaku was told by sources with knowledge of the situation that early to, uh, 2025 is currently the goal. Whoa, okay, that's crazy. Uh, however, they learned that it's becoming more and more likely that the sequel might not land until late 2025. It's also possible that it could even slip into 2026 as production reportedly falls behind as every Rockstar title in yeah, the history. This is so of unlike ever. them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huh? Jesus. It's like man. Capcom adding microtransactions to their games. <laughs> yeah. So they've technically always done this, but I'm still surprised. <laughs> yeah. Um I mean, we know that they've been trying to get employees back in. If you guys missed the story from probably a couple of weeks ago where they announced they wanted all of their employees to come back into the studio and work in the office. Uh, I think it was they required three days out of the week or maybe they were they had been requiring two days out of the week, but they were then moving to full time. Um, and part yeah. of that was to lock it down. They were worried about leaks. Um, and it's easier yeah. to manage that when you're inside the studio. But it maybe this is all part of the grand scheme to get people back in the office or, or the studio or something. But it also, I mean, there's a bunch of con- conflicting information. Some people are like, no, there's no evidence that it actually increases productivity to be in the studio physically. Other places say it definitely does increase productivity. Rockstar clearly thinks it improves productivity. Um, so we'll see. My, I, I would guess it's delayed. I mean, there's, I just don't think getting people in the office will magically fix it. Because they're going to run into more issues, right? Like, yeah, if they already are more than one or like one year removed from it, saying it's going to get hard, then they, I don't think they're going to make it. Yeah, and like, I mean, it seems yeah. like it, for them to be like, yeah, we're starting to slip behind. We might delay it a year. Like, what problems are they running into? Like, it's got to be pretty significant I mean, if they're going to delay it that long, unless they yeah. care much about. Because like they would potentially be delaying it out of the fiscal year that they were targeting, and that's not desired. So do they push it back to the holiday? Like I don't know how that works. I mean, they're now aiming early, so that would be next financial year, which is crazy. I, I don't know how that makes sense, but that kind of does show. If that was really the idea, that does show that for take two, that's that's like a big loss because then. If they really thought GTA was going to hit, like we did some calculations, or I, yeah, I in particular, like I thought there was no way it was going to be there because they would probably get more money from it than they were, uh, than they were looking at. But uh, if GTA 6 was included in their forecast, then if that removed, is that is removed, that's not great. That's not great. Well, and uh, like, and if it's then, yeah, moved to even further. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is like, they're getting very close with these delays to like significant new gaming hardware. Xbox is rumored to be dropping potentially a new console in 2026. Like 
Do that they... would be like a plot twist if they like, like can you imagine launch like, game for the new xbox like that would be phil spencer's over there like <laughs> trying to hack into their servers to, to uh, yeah, like... delay 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 please delay please delay <laughs> Yeah, yeah, imagine yeah. that like if xbox launches a new console playstation's launching launching theirs the year after so xbox has definitively the most powerful yeah, hardware Yeah, but i mean even if gta 6 launches into it because i think we should at this point just say okay it's gonna launch early 2026 i mean this always happens red dead was also fall 2016 or 2016 and then it launched in 2017. I think GTA was a, a delay as well. It always happened, so it's not like a surprise. But yeah, early 2026. Then it would still, at launch, be kind of an even playing field. PS5 Pro, we, we of course, kind of talked about that as well. But Digital Foundry with the leaked specs was like, we don't even think it's going to like go to 60 with these specs. But yeah, Xbox, if they're really starting a new generation, could. But then, yeah, it would still be... Uh, yeah. A year later that that console would launch well and I, i'd be worried that that would also lead to delays if they're like developing it and optimizing it for the series x and s and ps5 they will right now backwards compatible then i think for for starters and then launch it because that, that's what they launch did for like the a next PS5. gen yeah yeah then launch the next gen version later but that's that's of course very very future talk like uh we we will see um but yeah that's uh kind of crazy and uh, not surprising but i i do i mean 2025 we we talked about that marvel game it's also coming 2020 like there are so many titles monster hunter that that are launching 2025 ghost of shima 2 probably um if gta was really planned for early 2025 and it was included in take two's financial call then borderlands 4 is 2025 instead because that's not going to launch this year. So then we're really looking at a kind of And Sony's got a lot of stuff. Yeah, like Sony should Yeah, they have, have to. Like The Last of Us, Loop. whatever, 3, if they do that, or a new Naughty Dog IP. Yeah, uh, Santa Monica's so. working on stuff. The Days Gone team is working on something. Yeah. Uh, Blue Point is working on something. Um, yeah. Kojima, he's working on stuff. <laughs> like, Death Stranding 2 is 2025 as well. Like, it's already crazy, so... I don't know, but it's mo it's mostly that um, even last year with that many releases and success like Baldur's Gate 3, the gaming industry di still did not really grow that much. So that's why everyone is looking at GTA 6 to kind of get that new also mainstream sort of injection. Um, but yeah, they have to get it right and they won't, they are not sweat. I mean, they're probably sweating it, but it won't, like in a few years from now, it won't change anything. Yeah. I mean, it's it's more important to get the game right because there's a there's a lot riding on it, and even if this like a cyberpunk situation, I think that would hurt the whole gaming industry with a lot of like people that only that rarely play games that are getting the console and are playing this game, and if if it's like a technical disaster, then that's not good for everyone. Then a lot of people I think will stop ga gaming because they're they've been burned before and. Now they're like, okay, this is this is how gaming is these days. That sucks. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I mean, you cannot... It, it, it's almost impossible to put into words how big GTA is. Like, there are very few games that cross over the, like, media, the planes of media. <laughs> like, they cross from this plane to another, uh, going from video game to TV to film. And... GTA Red Dead is one like usually what I look at is if it pops up in TV shows or something that I watch I know it it's got that my a wide mass market appeal so like if South Park does an episode where they you know have everybody playing Red Dead Redemption 2 okay it's probably in the mainstream like it's it's crossed over um and very few games can do it but Rockstar games can and I agree they don't want to screw it up if this was a flop or if it has tons of problems or whatever i mean yeah, it's gonna be can. a disaster yeah. um yeah it, it's yeah that would be for everyone but I, I don't think it will but that will mean that they will take all the time they need and if they're already falling behind that's not a good sign that's really not a good sign yeah but maybe the early 2025 was always too ambitious because that's always what happens like so far nothing new is happening this always happens with rockstar games and it's kind of surprising that they are surprised because we are not yeah but uh, 
It's like the joke. Oh, well. yeah, you just take whatever date they said initially, add two and years, add a year, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, that works. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's more that they, of course, said 2025 when we were all expecting 2024 because it was in 2023 when they said that. So it already felt like, whoa. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we will uh, we will, we will, will uh, follow it here. And uh, yeah. yeah. So in this, this a, a number of years when it eventually comes out and we are old and gray, we will talk about it. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. I, I mean, maybe the, the lesson with all this is just that 2025 looks like it's going to be a year of madness. And there will yeah. be... Far Cry will be there as well. Like, multiple, yeah. Oh God, man, it's going to be so much. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, Jose, I don't, I don't know what to do with this super chat. I'm well, going to be honest. $20. $20 Tw to, to make that insult. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks, man. I don't... So 20 bucks, very generous. So thank you. Yeah, Appreciate yeah, yeah. you. Um, <sighs> I'm a I'm a be uncomfortably strange again and say how effing sexy you are, but Joe Raptor is not. JK, no, I'm JK. <laughs> JK, no, I'm JK. So are you joking about joking? Is it... So you're serious? Or are you joking? This is going to dominate my thoughts for the rest yeah, of the day. Yeah, okay. It's all, I'm, it's all I'm going to be thinking about. <laughs> Let's end on that high note. Yeah, man. also, to catch up on the others, uh, Mia, also, thank you for the super chat. Um, this is the question I think we've all been waiting the whole show to find oh, out no. about. Um, it's just what everybody has wanted to know. And there were technically hundreds of these questions. We just had to filter them out because there were so many. Uh, Jor, tell us about your gym and workout routine. Have you uh, been going already? Because that's what you kind of said, right? That people would get could get. Yeah, they could tease me. Take you I accountable. Don't. Yes, yes, I have been. Um, nice. We're we're not like. I I don't I don't know what gains, I could expect, but we're we're on our way. We're working on it. Okay, yeah. that's nice. That's nice. Uh, so for me, it's uh, four times a week now. Monday the legs and on Tuesday night either the chest or the, the back and then I switch that on Wednesday and then today Friday I uh, did sort of a combination of things and I'm going with two times with the trainer and two times with a friend who's a uh, is that like an English word wait yeah fish yeah wait <laughs> I've never said this word in English. Oh, now I'm really curious. Physiotherapy, <laughs> like he, he is a yeah. Is that a word? Physiotherapy? Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. So he he is okay, yeah. not physiotherapy, but he is like the the person who does that. So that helps. So that's cool. Oh, that is um, nice. That's a good friend to have. Yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, for me, it's yeah. just a lot of the stairmaster. I figure most cardio exercises, if I hate them with a passion, they're probably good for me. So um, I do Stairmaster, like two minutes high speed, one minute slow speed, just do Tabata um, surges with it. And then after that, go and lift. And I have a, you know, a series of workout plans um, that I follow for that, just so I can't cheat or can't skip sets. I just have to do everything on the list before I get to go home and I just do that. And it's, it's been good. It's been good. Um, I think I mentioned on stream at one point, there's an older gentleman. It, like I usually go pretty late at night cause I don't like a lot of people around there. But one of the reasons is because there's like this older guy who goes and he's wearing the big hoodie and he puts it over so like you can barely see him. looks like Emperor Palpatine and he just walks around and like, he's not super old. He's like maybe 50, but he walks around and he will pick somebody and he just mirrors them. So like if he picks me, he will follow me to every machine, to every bench, to every oh, treadmill, like smart. everything. And just do exactly what I do down to the count of reps. Just because he, I guess, doesn't want to make his own workout routine. So he just goes and leeches onto somebody else and copies them. And it's really uncomfortable because he'll just kind of like stand behind you swaying because he's probably amped up on pre-workout and wait for you to finish your set. Never says a word to you. He's got the big headphones on, and then he does his thing. It's really, really weird. It's so if you do like a very crazy thing that he probably won't be able to do, 
yeah then he's gonna still try oh yeah like at one point um i thought it was funny to like do um i forget what what was it i did something really stupid and weird like i got on the the floor like they have the stretching area and you can kind of sprawl out normally you just do stretches there but i just started like seeing okay i'm just gonna kind of bend my body in weird ways like i'm gonna put my hand on the wall and stretch weird because i was just like is he gonna copy like literally everything i do and sure enough he starts trying to stretch in weird ways just like i'm doing oh but god. pretending like it's he, he's just doing his own thing yeah, yeah, yeah. oh my god it's really so uncomfortable annoying. and i'm i've been there before where i've gotten there after him and i see him following around like a another like a high school kid who's on the wrestling team who's doing his workout and he just copies his workout and the guy's wearing his big he- big headphones if you try to talk to him or say something like you good bro he just will like turn like he can't hear you and it's just really uncomfortable it's really weird so i just go later at night when He's in bed. It's pretty funny how uh, someone asked. uh, Let's see. I think it was R-S-N-O-S. But what the uh, most annoying word in English is. And then we have higher lips saying literally. And I get that. Like I and you just casually in this in this story. We're like, he's literally. I was like, whoa. Oh, sorry. He's Wittowee. He's Wittowee. Copy everything I do. (laughs) Wittowee. Yeah, I have to. Co- I I had one of those words. I, I sometimes use like Google. I mean, to be honest, like some of the Dragon's Dogma like names of like the the cities and stuff, they're kind of annoying um, to properly pronounce. So having some uh, yeah issues with that. But uh, apart from that, yeah, sometimes you run into those. But I I try to just, just like not use those words, so it's easier. Yeah, that's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. But anyway, we're on the grind, Mia. We're working on it slowly, even with weirdos nice. following us around the gym. We're trying. Um, but as for the next episode, next week when we reconvene, we will be able to talk about season one of Suicide Squad. See oh, what's up my with God. Yeah. It's the 28 drive. Yeah. Yep. So we'll be able to do that. And then... Who knows what else? Will I, by the way, uh, will be going to China. Really? Yeah, for a holiday with my brother and his uh, girlfriend. I mean, uh, but, awesome. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but uh, we will. We, so so I won't be able to make one week, I think. But uh, that'll be a good yeah. time. Yeah. Well, yeah. we'll so, figure so that awesome. out. We'll cross that bridge when yeah. we come to it. That's awesome. Yes. Um. But with all this, I mean, everybody, thank you so much for watching. George, do you have any parting words of wisdom? Anything else you want to say? Um, Not really. Um, I hope everyone has great gaming time with uh, yeah, any of the games that they are choosing. Or if you're still playing Final Fantasy, I totally get that as well. And uh, yeah, let me let us know what you think of, uh, of Rise of the Ronin. I'm, I'm particularly curious about the Rise of the Ronin. Like, am I the outlier here? I mean, the Metacritic is still pretty good. But... The Metacritic's higher than I would have expected with these yeah, performance issues. Um, but it is mostly from like websites where it's like Hobby Consolas. It's like a Spanish website or something. Yeah. PlayStation Universe 95. How do you so do I'm like, that who are these? Who are, how are these? Who are these people? So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you give that a 95, but. I don't know. Some people, I know some reviewers, yeah, some they don't like consider technical issues when they're reviewing. They just review the game almost like in a, um, in a vacuum and they just don't really consider the, the problems. Cause they're like, Hey, when it's fixed, we won't be thinking about it. So let's just review it as a video game purely and ignore the rest. And as long as you're clear about that. Okay. But I, I mean, I just don't know how you, how you do that like give it a 95 like you're rating it higher than like on the same scale as like elden ring and games like that like i just don't understand how you put it in the same category but yeah it's sometimes it's 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 interesting but um hey more opinions always great yeah anyway you all are wonderful we appreciate you you're all fantastic have a wonderful wonderful weekend um yeah Enjoy whatever games you're playing. Stay safe, everybody. Much love. We will see you soon. Hugs and kisses. Bye-bye.